Good morning and welcome. My name is Pastor Penny Bonsell from Finlayson United Methodist Church and Sandstone United Church of Christ. And today is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, a day when we reflect on First Psalm and also the book of James in chapter three and four. And it also makes me think of growing in a garden. So what are you rooted in? We are so glad you could join us. So come along for the journey. Our call to worship for this morning. Who among you is seeking the wisdom of God? We long to hear God's word spoken to our hearts. Who among you is seeking God's bright and holy truth? We long to learn the ways of wisdom and righteousness. Who among you is seeking a spirit-filled life? We long to live lives of holiness and light. God grants God's wisdom generously to all who ask. Come near, people of God. Let us worship in wisdom and truth. Join us in singing Bring forth the kingdom. Opening prayer, our creator and sustainer, we confess that we are not always strong like trees planted by the water's edge. Sometimes we are weak and indecisive. When the first big wind comes, we lean and break. We plot revenge instead of letting you fight our battles. By our silence and busyness, we let wickedness and ugliness fester and flourish. Today, Lord, forgive us when we covet and lie and when we get caught up in things that displease you. Heal us, direct our paths, and be for us the peace we so desperately crave. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is Psalm 1, The Two Ways. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. James 3, 
Two kinds of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, selfish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Friendship or the world. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you are wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's message comes from Psalm 1 and also the book of James in chapter 3 and 4. For starters, the psalm that we are reading today, the first psalm, is like an instruction manual for reading the rest of the psalms. And remember, the psalms are songs with lyrics, poetry. They're similar to our hymnals in our worship services. The hymns are meant to complement the scriptures and the reading and the sharing and the prayers. The psalms were written to do the same thing. The psalms were meant to be a complement of the books of the Torah, which are the first five books of the Hebrew Bible or the first five books of the Christian Old Testament Bible. And in Psalm 1, it emphasizes the avoidance of the wicked and the study of the Torah. Those are key to blessing, and it's a poem. This poetry in Psalm 1 oscillates back and forth. Stay with God, avoid the wicked, do good, stay away from evil. Study, stay with God, and you'll be happy. Psalm 1, in the translation of NRSV, has a title of two ways. So back and forth goes this psalm. And yet in the belly of it is a beautiful imagery of this tree sitting by the water's edge, soaking up the water full of life is in this tree. And that's the image that we are invited to think of God. If we stay with God, we will be symbolically like a tree always having water and nutrients to grow. Psalm 1 also is a reflection on Jeremiah 17. In verse 7 and 8, we also hear a reference of a tree planted by water, suggesting the tree of life, a common motif to associate with wisdom which we've also read in the last couple weeks in Proverbs. Wise behavior produces life in all its fullness. Moving into the book of James in chapter 3 and 4, last week we talked about bridling and taming our tongues. Watch the words that we say. Be wise in those words. And that's where we lead into today's reading. James talks about wisdom and how if we stay with God, 
and that love. That is what will guide us forward and keep us away from things that are dangerous and evil. James says to praise God and that we can make peace. We can sow peace. We can work peace, says James. Now you've got to remember James is a doer and a worker. And the peace that he is talking about is not that we are in the center of the universe or even the universe of my own understanding and experience. The peace that says, while I am loved and valued, I understand that best when I love and value others. It's acting and working and caring for others is part of the message that Jane is revealing to us. When I pour out in the name of God into lives of those I love around me. Then James talks about a harvest, but it's not peace. Peace is not the end. Peace is not something that we just give to somebody, an object. It's a way of being, a presence, inviting people to find that love and peace of God in themselves. And it sounds like work, which is the opposite visual that we may get, like peace. Okay, I'm just going to relax and have peace. This is just the opposite of what James is inviting us to do. He's inviting us to use that love and that presence of peace with others. This kind of peace is the opposite of apathy. This peace turns tables on injustice. This peace brings a sword that cuts through pretensions and falsehoods, through prejudice and oppression. Yes, and that takes work. Sowing peace is an all-consuming activity, but it is righteous. And that's the harvest that James invites us to. Righteousness. What is it? Well, Jesus called it a kingdom of God. It is the body of Christ that living and loving together that builds a sanctuary against the life that tears down and separates. It's about covenant, our covenant, our relationships with God and with others. Righteousness is about living with God in the kingdom of God. On earth as it is in heaven, it's a way and it takes work. And that's why it reminds us of that tree and growth. What are we rooted in? We're rooted in the love and peace of God. Amen. Joys and Concerns and Prayers of the People. Dear God, guide us to you where happiness is found. Help us trust in you. Your love is our delight, like the trees planted beside the water stream, whose foliage never fades, sending out its roots by the stream. Your love will never fail. Help us to live in love, peace, and unity. Dear Father, 
Give us courage to do justice. Forgive us when we lose our way. We pray for our church, our communities, our local government and our state government and our world governments. May your creative love and compassion fill our hearts and minds. Comfort those who have lost loved ones and who are mourning. Comfort those who suffer, especially those who are dying for their faith in other countries. We give thanks for this beautiful creation we call planet Earth. Help us to be the best stewards we can be. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. Our prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, grant us the grace to be extravagant in the gifts we give to you. Help us to be wise and just in how we live with the resources we keep. Guide us in the way to lives that bear the fruit that is pleasing to you, lives full of mercy and compassion. Free us from envy and selfish ambition that leads us away from you that we might draw nearer to you. We pray in the love and hope that is Jesus our Savior. Amen. Please join me in the prayer that our Christ gives us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are so glad that you could join us today. May the love and peace of God resonate through you. Salam Aleikum and Shalom. Peace, dear friends.